Hey guys, today I wanted to make a video guiding you through your test. Today you have a test over Without Title, the poem that we've been reading for the last couple of days. And uh, the test scores have not been that great, so I just wanted to kind of read the test questions to you, but kind of talk about the test questions um, as you go along too, and maybe this will, will help our scores. And um, you'll get better at these, but it's just going to take a little bit of practice. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to open a copy of the poem. It asks about certain lines in the poem. So it starts with line one here, two, three, four, and then here's line five, and then you go six, seven, eight, and so on. So it marks every, goes in um, multiples of five. So you can count backwards or forwards to see which line um, it's talking about. What does the setting, ha, sorry, how does the setting illustrate the conflict in the poem? Okay, so we were talking about the setting um, yesterday. How does the setting illustrate the conflict in the poem? The setting in the city influences the life of the father who is in conflict with his culture being rooted in the natural world. So what that would mean is that the conflict is um, the influences that the city has on his father whose who's natural, I'm sorry, whose original culture, his Native American culture, is rooted more in the natural world or in nature, and he lives in the city. Is that the conflict in the story? The setting alternates between the city and the hunting grounds, illustrating how the father never adapted to his environment. So does the setting go back and forth between the city and the hunting grounds um, and show that he never adapted to living in the city, that he doesn't really function very well there? Or the setting alternates between the city and the hunting grounds, illustrating how one must exist without the other. How one must exist without the other. The city must exist without the hunting grounds, and the hunting grounds must, must exist without the city. And then the last one, the setting is the hunting grounds. The setting in the hunting grounds influences the father, who has lost his spiritual connection to the buffalo after their extinction. So is, is the theme of the poem, or the conflict of the poem, the extinction of the buffalo, and how that caused um, a spiritual disconnect? Uh, between the father and his Native American culture. Okay, hope I didn't confuse you on that one. Anyway, choose one of those. Next, which text from the poem illustrates the theme of loss of culture? So one of the themes of the poem, we talked about it, was the loss of his culture. Um, so which quote from the story or from the poem would best illustrate that? It's hard, you know, without the buffalo. Without a vision, he had migrated to the city. My mother, said, my mother said, get rid of them. Now that looks like an I, but it's actually showing you that that was part of one line and then going on to the next line. My mother said, get rid of them. The aerial on his old car waving. So which one of those best illustrates the theme of loss? Three. Which phrase from the poem shows how the author uses imagery to reflect her father's history? So I wanted to just kind of review what imagery is. Um, imagery is when the author creates a picture in the mind of the reader by using um, vivid language or things that, you, that create a picture in your mind. Okay, so as you look at these answer choices, think of which ones of these is the most vivid or can create a picture in your mind, but look what it's asking you. Shows the author's, I'm sorry, reflects the father's history. Okay, so maybe one of these is a vivid image, but it doesn't really have much to do with the father's history or his Native American culture. So which one of these would reflect the father's history and use imagery. The stockyards, his first kill, horns and hides, snow and mud. Which one of those has the most imagery 
and at the same time or creates a picture in your mind and also reflects the father's Native American culture. Number four, line two and line nine are connected by a reference to. I struggled with this for just a minute, um, so I wanted to clarify some things for you that I kind of thought about as I was reading. So there's, well, I'm going to go ahead and open this with Cami. I don't know why I didn't do that before. If you want to open this with Cami and mark it up as you read, you can do that. If it will open up, it's lines two and nine. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this would be line two. Sorry. The shaman, the arrow. I don't know why my cami tools aren't coming up, honestly. There we go. Sorry guys, I'm doing this live. I don't want to, I'm not going to re-record it, so we'll just deal with the mess ups here. Okay. So, the shaman, the arrow. Let me see if it will let me highlight that. There we go. All right, and then line nine. So if I go down here and see line 10, then I know go back one, and that is line nine. So how are they connected? So I notice that I have little numbers here which tell me that I've got a um, note down at the bottom. So the shaman, a person who interacts with the spiritual world. So the shaman is sort of like a religious leader, a spiritual leader in Native American culture, okay? And then, and then of course it has an arrow also. And then line nine, without a vision, he had migrated to the city. Look at two to see what they mean by vision here. So you could just think without a vision, so without a plan, without really knowing what li what was lying, laying ahead for him, waiting ahead for him. Um, but if you look at what a vision means here, what they're talking about, a guiding experience that often comes in a dream or a trance. So that can also be part of some Native American um, spiritual, um, wow. Well, yeah, that can also be part of a Native American religious uh, practice. So the question is, going back to the question, lines two and nine are connected by a reference to Native hunting practices, a loss of psychic powers, the extinction of the buffalo, or Native spiritual traditions. Number five, what do lines five through 13 reveal about the father? So let's first find what, where lines 5 through 13 are. So here's 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then here's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so all of that blue right there, 5 down to 13. He worked in the stockyards. All his life he brought us meat. No one marked his first kill. No one sang his buffalo song. Without a vision, he had migrated to the city and went to work in the packing house. When he brought home his horns and hides, my mother said, get rid of them. What do lines 5 through 13 reveal about the father? His day-to-day -day life has been stripped of cultural significance. He lives simply but can never realize his dreams. He enjoys city life but wants to revisit his old hunting grounds. He adopts the life of an ordinary person, but likes to dress up as a warrior. So one thing that you have to think about is we're just looking at lines 5 through 13, and what does that reveal about the father? You have to stay within the text. You can make inferences sometimes based on what you know outside of the text, but on this one, it specifically says about lines 5 through 13. So if there's no evidence for something, we can't just assume that that something is true. Okay, so I'm just going to go with this one right here. When it says he likes to dress up as a warrior, we don't have any evidence for that in the text whatsoever, that he likes to dress up at all as anything. So I can't really, maybe he does, 
put, maybe he does have a traditional headdress that he inherited from his father or his grandfather, but it doesn't say anything about that, okay? So again, five through 13, what does that reveal about the father? He worked in the stockyards all his life. He brought us meat. No one marked his first kill. No one sang his buffalo song. Without a vision, he had migrated to the city and went to work in the packing house. When he brought home his horns and hides, my mother said, get rid of them. Okay. Number six. From lines 11 through 13, the reader can infer. Now, when you see that word infer, sometimes you have to go outside the text to think about that answer because you have to draw on your own experiences, maybe things that you know about or things that you've read about before because the answer is not directly in the text. If you see the word infer, you have to make an inference. So lines 11 through 13, one of the most important things is that you, I'm going to trash that um, annotation there. Um, 11, 11 through 13. So here's 11. All right, this is 11 through 13. When he brought home his horns and hides, my mother said, get rid of them. What can you infer from that? That he brought home these horns and hides, and remember we were talking about yesterday, that he probably did that because it was sort of a substitute for his traditional um, native thing that he would have done, which would be to bring home the hides and maybe the antlers of a deer that he had killed or the buffalo hide to um, tan it um, and preserve it and use it for blankets or clothing or all kinds of things to keep the, the horns. You know, they used horns for all different things, um, probably for weapons and uh, decorations and all kinds of things. So what can we infer the fact that his, his wife, the mother in the story, his wife just says when he brings that home, get rid of it, get rid of it. The poet's mother and father come from different backgrounds. So that would mean that he's Native American and she's not. Do we have any evidence for that? I would go back to the poem and read the introduction or the, the uh, information about the author. The poet's mother doesn't like buffalo meat. The poet's mother doesn't appreciate traditional culture. The poet's mother and father quarrel a lot. Do we have evidence for that? Number seven, what is the most likely reason the author wrote this poem? So this talks about author's purpose. Why did she write it? Notice these different verbs here. To describe, to inform, to honor, to ensure. Ensure, okay? So. Did she write this poem just to describe her father and how he lives? Did she write it to inform people about Native American ceremonies? Did you learn that from the poem? Did she want you to learn about different Native American ceremonies? To honor her father and his traditions or to ensure Native American traditions are preserved? Really think about what, what the poem says and don't think too much into it. What do you think this author was trying to get across to us? Line 18 of the poem suggests that the author something. So let's find line 18. Well, here's 20. So this would be 19, 18. I remember the silence of his lost power. The silence of his lost power. Does that mean that, does it suggest that the author thinks her father is weak? That she understands the depth of her father's loss? That she lacks respect for her father? Or she remembers her father's words as quiet? So this would be the literal answer. When, she's, um, when she says, I remember the silence of his lost power. This would be very literally that her father was quiet, okay? You know what, lacking respect for her father, she doesn't respect him, doesn't think he's, you know, um, 
someone to be admired, or she understands the depth of his loss. What has the father lost? Some of your questions dealt with that yesterday. And then she thinks her father is weak. Select two lines from the poem that connect the title to the content of the poem. So we talked about the title quite a bit yesterday, but it was without title. Um, and what was the subtitle? For my father who lived without ceremony. Which two lines from, select two lines from the poem that connect the title to the content of the poem without title. But my father went out each day to hunt. He worked in the stockyards. All his life he brought us meat. No one sang his buffalo song. Without a vision, he had migrated to the city. Remember, a vision here is related to the Native American uh, spiritual um, customs. A vision was, was a spiritual thing. So, which one of these two connect to the title of the poem, which is called Without Title, and we talked about how that was sort of had, had a double meaning. Okay, number 10, select two details that symbolize the father's loss of culture. Select two details that symbolize the father's loss of culture. So when something symbolizes something else, you have a concrete object that represents something else, like the stars on the American flag represent the 50 states. So the loss of culture, you have to think about the wording here. The red buffalo, no buffalo song. The buffalo grunts in the father's snore. The hides the mother makes the father throw out bringing home the meat. So you're going to choose two of these that symbolize the father's loss of culture. Really think about it. Does bringing home the meat represent a loss of culture? I think we could eliminate that one. Now we get to the short answer or the, the short essay questions. What effect does the tone of the poem have on the theme of loss? Support your answer with evidence from the text. So the tone overall of the poem. The tone is the author's attitude towards what he or she is writing about. So what is her attitude towards her father and his loss of his culture? Okay, that is one of the themes of the poem. The loss of his culture. The loss of his identity his community, his rituals, okay? So what effect does the tone of the poem have on the theme of loss? So basically, how does the theme, does it match with the, how does the tone match the theme, okay? So let me just give you an example. If her tone was really like happy and upbeat and, um, let's say, inspirational and uplifting, would that match with a tone of loss? And if not, then what is, the, what is her tone? She didn't have a tone of like optimism and um, happiness and all of that. She had a different kind of tone. So what is the tone of the poem? You can, you can Google some tone words if you want to. And how would how does it support her theme of loss? Make sure you use a piece of text evidence, at least one, okay? At least three good sentences. Guys, it's so important that you get full credit on these essay questions. Remember, I can only give you full credit or no credit, so you don't want to lose that many points. The next one. Describe the author's response to observing over the years her father's attempts 
to keep his native traditions alive. Cite evidence from your poem to support your answer. So, over the years, she watches her father do things like this. He tries, for instance, he tries to bring home, or he does bring home hides and horns from the stockyard, from the from the pack, meat packing plant. So that's him trying to preserve at least a little piece of his Native American culture, his hunting culture. Um, so that's an example of him trying to keep it alive. What is the author's response to observing that? How does that make her feel? Okay, what does she say about it? And just describe it. I mean, she wrote a poem about it, so it was an important, important thing in her life. All right, that's that's all um, for your test. I think that you'll do better on this one. I hope so. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask me the questions in person while you're taking the test, and I'll either tell you I can help you or that I can't, but it doesn't hurt to ask. You may use an electronic dictionary, a paper dictionary. You can Google tone words. Just don't try to search up, you know, answers to the test or anything. All right, and that's all for this video, and um, once you get your test taken, I'll grade it as soon as I can and get the grades in the grade book, and I will talk to you soon.